Hopefully we'll have a good, good, good modern morning. We've been getting a little bit beat up the last couple modern leagues. So this is um, Robots or Affinity or whatever you want to call it. The deck that's kind of existed around modern since the inception of the format on the back of Mox Opal being a busted card that lets you play two lands in the same turn. And then this deck is notably looking to abuse uh, Experimental Frenzy, a couple copies of the main and a third in the board to uh, generate some crazy card advantage against the uh, decks looking to go longer in the format. So uh, let's see how this goes. I feel like this deck on the surface is probably pretty reasonable in the format. Galvanic Blast uh, specifically makes you pretty reasonable against like the Arclight Phoenix decks and you've always been able to race some things like Dredge on occasion. Reminder that cumulative variance should be a force due to the card adjustment. That's true. That's true. After after our run with Soul Tide Control, we're probably doomed to falling on our face here today. Uh, pretty easy mulligan of our Hearthstone hand here. Steam Flogger Boss, thanks for the 20 months. Welcome back. No, I haven't watched Yu-Gi-Oh! stuff since I was a kid. This game's like not super explosive, but I think it's fine. I think I'm gonna. I think I'm supposed to ditch the Dark Steel Citadel. Keeping the Citadel is good in the event that we, like, draw Mox Opal exactly, but... Morning, Sharps. <clears throat> Put an also in six. Basic Swamp. Basic Swamp could mean a lot of things. Uh, statistically, if you're working with the popular decks, I think Basic Swamp is Black Green Rock at the moment. But obviously it could be a fantastic number of things, including Living End. <clears throat> this matchup isn't terrible for Affinity overall if you have a reasonable start, because notably uh, Arcbound Ravager lets us sacrifice our entire board. So that way, if they living in to try and clear, we don't actually lose all of our stuff. Hey, Tube. Thanks for the support. How oh, did I miss it? I really need an alert. I'll get that added today after I'm all done. Happy, happy Wednesday. D sphere, oh damping sphere. Uh, I don't know that I really need to address that. I'm just like double cranial plating here. Let's like get these down. Do I want to get ornithopter going? I probably do. Like the, orn the ornithopter kills pretty quickly here, right? Like this is. One, two, three, four, five, six artifacts. This is an equipment that gives a creature plus one attack for each artifact I, I control. Hey, Lenuga Burn. Thank you for the 14 months. I appreciate that. Welcome back. The great, the Aura Talk. Thank you for the 11 months. <clears throat> Hope you're having a fantastic Wednesday. That's awkward. So we were going to be in an okay spot, even if they living ended here because they didn't have any flyers, but Fairy Macabre changes that dynamic yeah i think i think it's pretty unlikely that we get a poison kill off next turn i think it's i think it's very likely that uh we're gonna see them 
cast Violent Outburst here. And in fact, we'll probably see them. Oh, they didn't Violent Outburst in response. Okay. Deal. I, I assume they're going to Violent Outburst here because otherwise they're taking a huge chunk. Okay. And now, because my opponent let us get Arcbound Ravager into play here, they we get to we get to get all these things back. So Arcbound Ravager puts small my creatures in the bin, and then Living End's gonna happen. I guess I should technically wait for Living End to be on the stack, huh? Oh, they have another Fairy Macabre. That makes sense. Probably dead. But why would I why would I want to animate Blink Moth, Seth? It would die to the Living End then. Uh are we dead? This is 8, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. <clears throat> I'm dead to second violent outburst here. Do I need do I need Ornithopter for Lethal on the Ink Moth? If I go animate, I have one, two, three, four, five. No, I can go ahead and block here. And then I'd take five, 13, 19. So I'm blo I'm blocking on the monstrous carapid because if they have a second violent outburst, I'd die otherwise. And then if they don't have a beast within or a flying blocker here, my ink moth kills them next turn, so. You know, more power to you, I guess. I, I assume they have something like that since they attacked with these. Ah, they have Fulminator Mage. That makes a lot of sense. That also does it. This uh, destroys a non-basic land of which Inkwath Nexus is. Main deck, uh, Macabre Zero are very good for them. Both as flying blockers and as ways to disrupt my Ravager from getting things back. <clears throat> what are we doing, opponent? I'm on the Zero Outer anyways, so I guess, I guess I'll just concede rather than rather than waiting for, for them to do something here. <clears throat> Morning, Paper Skate. Howdy, howdy. All right, so Rest in Peace and Spell Pierce are obviously good here. Uh, Master of Ethereum seems unnecessary. Galvanic Blast doesn't seem particularly good. I think I, I, think I like Frenzy in this matchup. Just as like a way to rebuild after they after they do their thing. Like obviously spell pierce frenzy isn't a strict combo, but if I have if I have frenzy going, I probably don't really need to worry about the spell pierces. Welding jar doesn't really have text. So maybe I don't want that. Leaving a couple of blasts as ways to, you know, poke them in the face. This seems fine. Maybe Master of Ethereum is better than a Blast just because it makes our dorks bigger. Seems good. I had heard from a... I, I've never played this matchup before, but I... The... What I had always heard was that it wasn't terrible for Affinity, but that did not feel particularly good. And maybe they just, like, had the Macabre and things lined up well for them. But even even with the Ravager there that we drew, it did not feel like we had a very good chance. Living in, Living in tends to beat up on 
the slightly slower creature based decks like any any matchup where living end is good as wrath of god tends to be a good matchup for the living end archetype and we are we are definitely a deck that's trying to win via creatures which makes it probably challenging for us in this matchup This could be an etch champion matchup. It's a 2 2 for 3 that gets protection from all colors. I could see that being better than Galvanic Blast. It's like as a way to a way to punch through. Love to play first. Um, yeah, this hand does affinity stuff. Oh, Marion, thank you for the 12 months. I appreciate that. Welcome, welcome, welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. Have a sword to go with your shield. Ka, thanks for the raid. Hope you had a good stream today. All right, so we've got Opal. Into Ornithopter, into Ink Moth, into Signal Pass. So do I want to... It's technically more resource efficient to cast Cranial Plating this turn, right? But do I do I want to prioritize being resource efficient? Or do I want to prioritize getting Signal Pass to attack with next turn? I think I want to prioritize being resource efficient here. I actually, I actually set up for... Uh, like a turn three ink moth kill with this 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 sequence right because then next turn i can go spire animate ink moth uh equip mox opal you yeah, know we're actually we're actually getting set up to just kill them on our turn three So we're attacking for seven infect on turn two infect for those who are newer to magic is a mechanic where it deals damage to creatures in the form of minus one minus one counters and when it deals damage to a player they get these infect counters instead of taking normal damage and 10 infect counters are lethal didn't sleep well last night i slept fine last night opponent digging for what I would assume is an ingot chewer here or some way to interact with the cranial plating. My opponent conceded. <clears throat> this is what a what a wonderfully modern match. Opponent cast a card in the first game that negated all of my plays. I killed them on turn three in the second game. <laughs> I didn't talk about this last turn. Or last last game. I don't think this is a damping sphere matchup. So damping sphere makes them pay one extra for each additional spell they cast. And like this is this makes their living in turns cost four. But I don't I don't think that's good enough. I think I'd rather I'd rather just stay the course. Accidentally pulled an all nighter. How do you do that by accident? I was binging a show and then it was morning. Oh, oh, to be young. Or more specifically to have a, a lack of responsibilities. <clears throat> There's probably more apt description than age. <clears throat> 
To be honest, last turn and last game are synonymous and modern for most matchups. Yep. Oh, Moto and the opponent's rate of play. And this is this is really the biggest thing about the Moto Clock, and I've talked about this before on stream. It's like the games on Magic Online don't even just go slow because essentially everybody's in full control mode all the time. But like the way the chess clock works on Magic Online, it allows people to just like ignore their application for extended periods of time. So like if you look back on this game, it hasn't even been about like my opponent like tanking on hard decision turns. They've literally just been like times like this where it's waiting for them to click go first so they're obviously like having a connection problem or they're doing something else while they're playing magic online causing us their opponent to have to wait <clears throat> i don't know anner if you're in uh the subs discord and you turn on at everyone notifications i'm the only one that does at everyone notifications in there so that's another way you can get a ping I do that. I do that every morning or every time we go live. I think I'm going to mulligan this. This hand's not particularly explosive. It doesn't have a payoff like uh, Arcbound Ravager or Cranial Plating, and it doesn't have any of our sideboard cards like Spell Pierce or Rest in Peace. So I think it's a pretty easy mulligan on seven. Um. That seems like pretty reasonable. This like doesn't have a sideboard card in, but it's just like a good affinity hand. I have to take something and throw it back here. I think I'm ditching Vault Scourge. My, my turn one is going to be Ink Moth, Ornithopter, Springleaf Drum, Signal Pest. And then we'll steal Overseer the turn after. Yeah, it ended up, ended up being kind of sweet, uh, Philly. Ah, you can put Discord on your mobile, Anner. <clears throat> Discord. Discord's great. It works everywhere. They even have a native Linux client. They're wonderful. Now, there is, there is a a very real chance that just having a good affinity hand here on the draw is not good enough. A very, very real chance that they get they get set up and kill us before we really get going here. The the opponent's deck tends to be incredibly consistent just because their deck is basically a one card combo with the cascade card, and then they have all these cards that psycho to let them draw more cards. So their deck does does the same thing most games. <clears throat> all right, so what do I what do I want to do here? This kills on four with infect. Can we kill on three? So what can I what can I do this turn? This turn I can like Memnite, Cranial Plating, Equip Cranial Plating Attack. I think that's the line. The, pro the problem is my opponent is like incredibly likely to attack me next turn. Or to kill my board next turn. So I've got six artifacts. I'm hitting them for seven here. So we actually had them just like dead to normal damage next turn. Seven is a lucky number. Well, thank you, Lord Pearl, Lord of the Pearl Trident. I appreciate you shipping your basil bucks back this way again. And DMS checking in for the 16th month. From meme Mondays to video games, seems like it's been forever. It has it has been a hot second. are down to 10. I assume we'll see cycle cycle, untap, put all these scary things into play. And the question becomes like, can I can I close out before before they kill me? To which the answer I think is no. They've got four creatures in there. Maybe we're incredibly lucky and they don't have one of their eight combo pieces or they're missing their third land. The fact they fetched a basic swamp here, I think, implies that they have the uh, the dread return in there, not the dread return, the uh, the red cascade card in their hand. Yeah, they have another cycler too. All right, Angel Puff, thanks for the seven months. I appreciate that. Welcome back. 
This was an incredibly uh, modern match of Magic. My opponent did the thing that negated my entire game plan games one and three. I killed them on turn three in the second game. Not not a whole lot of player counterplay. It's just like how the how the good decks in this format go a lot of the time. If you're not super familiar with modern, a lot of a lot of modern with the the decks that are considered good in the format, the decks are kind of playing past each other as opposed to playing with each other. And like I said, playing that, um, I think my gut instinct that Arcbound Ravager gave us kind of uh, a leg to stand on there. I think the dynamic of them having uh, Fairy Macabre changes that uh, changes that a good bit. And I think the fact that our deck's like trying to win with creatures puts us in a pretty pretty bad spot against the deck that like its combo involves killing all the creatures in play. This hand seems fine. It's a turn. Oh, this hand's like actually really good, right? It's like Dark Steel Citadel, Mem Knight, Opal, Turn One Cranial Plating. We didn't win the die roll, but uh, it is what it is. Ooh, Temple Garden and not Thoughtseize. God bless. God bless us, everyone. All right, we might not, we might not get a turn three, champ. We might, we might, we might not get a turn three. Welcome to modern. Welcome, welcome to modern. Do 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 do. Hey, what's going on, Perp? Thanks for the host. Welcome to folks coming over from Perp Stream. We are currently playing some uh, modern on Magic: The Gathering Online after. Uh, after a few matches on here, we kick on over to Magic Arena for some standard for the rest of the day. All right. Uh, so, uh, Devoted Druid alongside Vizier of Remedies gives my opponent unlimited green mana. So if they have a way to kill us with that unlimited green mana, we'll be dead here on their third turn. So they sit here, they sit here, and they hey diddle diddle, the devoted druid and the fiddle. The card they're looking for now is called Duskwatch Recruiter, because Duskwatch Recruiter, along with infinite green mana, lets them lets them get every creature out of their deck. My opponent cast Collecting Company and missed, so <laughs> they didn't find anything. They have another Collecting Company here. Up to six mana, seven, eight. Do I have enough standard decks? I think we're going to have enough standard decks to get through the rest of the week. All right, so this is Quarter Calling, so I don't know why they dicked around with this. So this gets them Duskwatch Recruiter, and then Duskwatch Recruiter spends three mana or two get a creature out of their deck, and they can do that as many times as they want because of Devoted Druid. And then one of the creatures in their deck is a card called Walking Ballista, which allows them to spend an unlimited amount of mana to deal an unlimited amount of damage. So we have uh, died on their third turn. Again, not really playing with each other, just kind of playing past each other. Which, in all in all honesty, so like this this deck, we its name is uh, Frenzy Affinity here. I'm not really sure that Experimental Frenzy is really something that's fantastic in modern. Like, I guess it's good in the fair matchups, but like, how many fair matchups actually are there in this format? At the end of the day, feels feels like not a whole lot. So I'm gonna cut the Experimental Frenzies because this card's about generating value, and this deck's killing us really quickly. I'm gonna cut these Walding Jars because my opponent's deck generally doesn't have lots of ways to destroy my artifacts. We're bringing in Dispatch and Gear Up Your Aether Grid because we need to attempt to be interactive with our opponent because their deck is much faster than ours when it comes to just, like, nuts linear draws. Um, this hand just doesn't do anything, right? Like, it needs, it needs another piece. I was, like, really close to being good. If this was a Darksteel Citadel, we'd keep it because we'd have Moxlepl online. But without Moxlepl being online, this ain't just, like, only cast an Ornithopter. The the green-black rock mirror is quite possibly the worst magic that you can play, in my opinion. It's not quite duo-standard Esper mirror bad, but it's pretty close. Uh, match two, game two. We uh, we we got thoroughly thoroughly spanked by uh, 
what's it called in the first match? We were thoroughly spanked by uh, Living End. Yep, yeah, the for those that haven't been keeping up with Magic Online recently, the London Mulligan was added uh, a week ago on the 10th. Two mana payoff creatures, pretty good draw here. We might be getting set up for turn three lethal. So next turn I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I think I'm dealing like eight infect next turn. Would you agree with the professor that duo standard was the worst format in magic? I think from a competitive standpoint, yeah, it's quite possibly one of the worst formats that's ever been, ever been created. So Knight of the Reliquary here allows them to search their library for a land of their choosing. They likely have access to the card Ghost Quarter, which will allow them to destroy my Blink and Eekmoth Nexuses. So the fact that they've put this into play here, I think changes which Nexus I want to attack with here. Let me, let me just double check that they're not dead here. So if I spend one to animate this, I can then spend one to equip it. And then I can spend another one to animate this, which would give me one, two, three, four, five, six, seven artifacts, plus an eighth power, plus a ninth power. I believe I can only hit them for nine in fact here. So let's just double count again. So if I if I animated both of these, these are two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then so that's seven artifacts total in play. And then this is a power to start, which is eight. And then this has a ninth power. I can't pump with the blink because that requires mana to activate. So like it cost me, it cost me one mana to animate this. And then it cost me one mana to equip. And then it would cost me one mana here to animate this. So because I can only do nine infect here, I think I'm actually supposed to deal nine regular damage because um, my opponent is likely going to be able to get a Ghost Quarter to stop me from Infect killing them the following turn. And I'm going to go ahead and animate this Ink Moth Nexus here, not only because it gives this an extra power with the Cranial Plating, but it also gets a 1-1 counter when I activate the Steel Overseer here. So we were a little bit shy of the turn 3 kill this game. Rats. Some impressive affinity hands for sure. I feel like if I wanted Experimental Frenzy in this archetype, it's probably a card that I would want to relegate to the sideboard just based on like how linear modern tends to be. For those not familiar, when we refer to a deck as linear in a game like Magic, linear refers to decks that are trying to kind of ignore the opponent and just like execute their own game plan. Yeah, yeah, if this if this had been a Dark Steel Citadel, we would have had Lethal that turn. There, there actually aren't any whip flares in the 75. See if they fetch a ghost quarter or a field of rune. No, I generally don't check spoilers in the morning. Like, my, my morning is, like, wake up at 6.30 or 7, depending on when my child kicks me or comes, comes, in, and, comes in and asks me to help get him breakfast and turn the TV on. And then, like, there's, like, 45 minutes of, like, getting them ready to go so they can get out the door to go to daycare. And then um, I spend, like, 15 minutes, like, getting breakfast for myself and stuff in the morning. So... They, they don't have mana for Collected Company here. Right? I, th I think I just equip this here to the Ink Moth. This gives me... This gives me three lethal attackers. I guess, do I? Oh, I'm dumb. 
I'm done. They're at seven. I don't know why I was thinking they were lower than that. This is fine though, right? Yeah, this is this is fine. Down to six, sure. Okay. Courting for one, sure. They're going to three. Sure, they have a Mr. Seer. So they're gonna sacrifice both of these to get some, I don't know why they didn't scry. Man. This game lasted all the way till both of us had turn fours. Eight eight turn match, eight turn game of modern. This is a, this is a long time. It's like it's like a geriatric match of modern. What a slog! It was so long. They didn't they didn't concede till turn eight. It took forever. All right, I'm happy happy that we boarded. Let's run it back. <laughs> That's that's the best DMS when you can like get them to start doing things for you. Uh, hmm. I get to play my entire hand on turn one, so I I don't I think this hand is good. Like I get to play all seven cards. We're gonna go Citadel, Thopter, Thopter, Opal, Ravager, Eat My Opal, Play Signal Pest, Pass Back, like. This is, these are like, this is like the robot hands that like terrify people in their sleep. Like, I feel like when people play against this deck, they feel like every hand looks like this. Just does not, does not feel fair. All right, so turn, turn two, we're going to be attacking for at least five, maybe more. Not, not a bad turn. Storm, storm count is six. Gear appear Aether Grid. Rats. We're so we're so unlucky. Just just the gosh darned unluckiest. Draw cranial cranial plating would have been would have been the nuts draw, right? I think I just put them to 13 here. No reason to get aggressive. Ackline, thank you very much for the brand new tier one sub. Hope you're having a fantastic Wednesday. Welcome to the middle of the week. Thanks for keeping me employed here. Don't kataki me, bro. Don't, don't kataki me. All right, next turn. Next turn they have infinite. Are they dead? I think they're dead. I think, I think they're gonna kill us on their turn for you. Yeah, I think they're dead to the ink moth, right? So I animate Ink Moth, I attack for two, and then that's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh yeah, super dead. Look at that. They killed us on turn three in the first game. We killed them on turn three in the third game. <laughs> oh, this format. <laughs> Format. Oh, oh my. you know, I I will say this from a from a personal enjoyment standpoint, I I enjoy this format way more when like there's just no romantic notions involved, right? When like when we're not trying to like make this format into something it's not, and like play fair or be cute and stuff like that, and we're just like. Playing the good decks that kill people by turn three. It's like, yeah, this format's fine. Yeah, I'm picking up what it's putting down. Is Frenzy there so that we know to ship it to the bottom when we bully good? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, just be brutal, right? 
Hey, HF, I'm a fan from Australia. I've been following your stuff since I started playing back in Theros. I was a fan of the Naya Aggro deck with voice, Fable Hero, and Gore Clan, and reading your articles and messing around with decks that really hold fond memories for me. Nice. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. That was um, Fabled Hero. Gosh, that's that's the name I hadn't heard before. I love I love when Giant Growth's a constructed playable card. That <laughs> I am I am a sucker. I am a sucker for playable constructed playable combat tricks. And like when you can make Giant Growth be fringe constructed playable, it's just like oh, but still my heart. You know, it's funny, so many people have commented on the beard being big, and I feel like it's really not that big, but the fact that, like, it's, like, just been slowly growing on me means I probably don't notice it as much. Hey, Just Up, thanks for the two-thirds of a year, welcome back, thanks for keeping me around. What does this hand do? I think this is a keep on the draw. Like, this hand technically has two lands in it, and, like... If they play a creature on one, I get to go, like, Citadel, Memnite, Springleaf Drum, like, Blast the Bird or whatever, depending on what they're playing. My opponent went to six as well. Yeah, yeah, modern modern tournaments are an absurd amount of waiting. When I, um, the modern open that I top aided with Blue Red Wizards, and, like, that deck's more controlling and interactive than a lot of these decks. I remember it was round... It was round five, and I, and I was 5-0, and I had spent less time, I had spent, like, less than an hour actually playing Magic in five rounds. Just, like, all the rounds were just so brutal and fast. Forest Ancient Strings. Opponent Mulligan to four this game. So, probably Tron. Tron. Tron's a deck that tends to Mulligan a lot. Ghost Quarter. Could be a Brew. Could be Tron with an exceptionally bad draw. Drawing, drawing a one drop here is like pretty reasonable. Gives me something to do with this. Storm count is three. That's one of my favorite, like little things like that. Um, little things like that, like making making bad what's the storm count jokes when your deck doesn't care about storm count are some of the things I miss about Paper Magic. Just like in a deck like this where the storm count's irrelevant. I think every male full-time streamer goes through a phase where they grow their beard out longer than normal just to shave before you reach the 365-day Caleb beard. Yeah. I did, I did shave. I did clean up my neck, though, yesterday. That was bothering me. Remember, chat, just because you have a nice beard doesn't mean you need to have a neck beard. I feel like, I feel like as a... As both a Linux user and a Magic player, it's my duty to keep, like, semi-well-groomed, just so I don't like forward stereotypes that are negative about my gaming culture. Of course it was with the Harry's Razor. They are wonderful. I went to the barber for the first time last week before my wedding this past Saturday, and I was missing out. Barbers are fantastic if you find a good one, and I found a good one. You know, my, my hair is, like, like when we cut the hair on the top of my head, Chrissy just, like, takes the razor and shaves. Because I don't have much hair, and we don't do anything fancy with it. I, I think I just want a Ravager here. And then fire this up. I don't have lethal, right? This is four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we'll have them dead next turn. The barber dyed my hair and my beard. Very, very nicely done beard. Oh, you. 
No, I've never used Dollar Shave Club stuff, Blur. Yeah, and again, it's like, well, I like, I have this experimental frenzy, I guess, but like, why, why do I have an experimental frenzy? I'm gonna, I'm gonna kill them this turn. Am I or did I miss count? It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, I guess I'm short, huh? I guess I'm short. Maybe I'm supposed to play the frenzy. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, oh, I could have killed them by sacking Ravager, right? You know, I don't, I don't know. So that's, that's tough. If they, if they have O-Stone, they're still dead because of Blink Moth Nexus. So I think it's fine to be a little conservative here. So like they have they have Tron, but like Worm Quail doesn't save them because I have flying creatures. And Ugin Ugin doesn't do anything. Uh, Baby Karn is corporate Karn because he's wearing pants, and Karn Karn Liberated doesn't have pants on. Kill you with the cranial plating. That's how we roll. All right, frenzy out, damping sphere in, click submit. I don't think this is a Spell Pierce or an Ancient Grudge matchup. I think I'd rather just get linear. Let's get linear, linear. I guess I guess I could see Dispatch being okay. Galvanic Blast isn't fantastic. Maybe I cut the, the Galv Blast and like bring these in. Galv Blast like only serves as like a Dome U for four, which to be fair, the Doming for four was useful there. I think, I think I'm going to try these. I could, I could see Spell Pierce not being good enough though. Definitely see an argument for that, that not being a card I'm interested in playing. How are we supposed to get a storm count when we board a damping sphere? You get the storm count beforehand, and then you play damping sphere at the end. The con, father. Good morning. Fancy you showing up while we're playing against Strud. Did you know? Was it speaking to you? Oh. Oh, chat. Chat, do I keep? Do I keep? This hand is the nuts with any land. Any, any land in this hand is the nuts. We're on, we're on the draw, chat. We're on... We're on the draw. There's only 17 lands in our deck. We want, we're up a game. We're up a game. Oh, we're so incredibly unlucky. Just, just the gosh darned unluckiest. I mean, like, this isn't a zero land hand. It's basically a one lander. It's ba it's basically a one lander. I boarded Frenzy out, so that can't happen at least. This is post board, so I got to cut the bad card.
Captain Obvious. Thanks for cashing in your prime support this way this month. There's a lot of great people making a lot of great stuff on Twitch right now. Thanks for supporting mine this month with that. You sure could, because it's Moto. Is it Mystic? Z, my stick. Thank you for the second month of support there. Welcome back. What's the game plan if we don't draw a land? Right click concede. This game, game plan is old as time itself. Look at that. We played our two drop on turn two. What an, what an incredibly fair and balanced game plan. Attack for zero. Said to best edge. Said to best edge. Thanks for the biddies, engineer. Yeah, there's three copies of Experimental Frenzy in the 75, but believe it or not, we're three for three on playing against incredibly linear modern decks that don't care about card advantage, so we've been boarding Frenzy out a lot. Yep. I think I think I'm on the no gamble no future plan here. I think I I think I like I could get damping steer net like obviously they could oblivion stone me next turn, but I think I I think I'm supposed to just hope they don't have the third Tron piece naturally. Because like if they have to tutor for the Tron piece, they then can't blow up the Oblivion Stone next turn. And that potentially gives me a chance. It's a white card in my hand. That's a dispatch. Have you played a vampire tribal deck before? Yeah. Uh, wait, what format? In standard, we've played one or two. In modern, we have not. <clears throat> so, the game plan next turn is activate Steel Overseer, cast Damping Sphere, sacrifice Mox Opal, and, well, that's a, that's a walking ballista, huh? That's a walking ballista. It's a spire. So, how much damage can I deal this turn? So, I can dispatch this walking ballista... And then this hits for three, four, five, six, seven. I have to put Damping Sphere down this turn. Mamost, thanks for the support. Zakama. I've heard mixed things from, from Amulet Titan players and playing Zakama. The question is, do I want to dispatch this Walking Ballista to get in an extra three points? I think I do, right? Yeah, I mean, I mean we're definitely activating this. Like, that, that's not a question. We get, in, we get in for the same amount regardless. The question is, do I want to burn the dispatch on the Walking Ballista? No, the question here, I think, is if I if, so I could I could dispatch this walking ballista and then sack and then play damping sphere and then sacrifice this and this to this and then hit them for seven down to twelve. And then the following turn. I mean I'm just supposed to hope they don't have the fifth land. I'm probably supposed to hope they don't have the fifth land. You think, I think I'm on the hope for no fifth land plan. 
And if they have it, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Now I think I think we're losing that game regardless. I think I think by the time a Thrag Tusk or a Worm Coil is relevant, this game will have been decided. They don't they don't have a fifth land naturally here. This game should be over. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Even if they have the fifth land, we'll load up onto onto a creature and save it. Do 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 Hey, hey, we're two and one. Keep rolling them on off here. I kind of hope we run into like, I don't know, blue white control or black green rocks. We can like see if these experimental frenzies feel good. So far, so far we've just been like on the mono linear game plan, which is like what modern is. And the frenzies like haven't really had any, haven't really had text boxes. What did we lose to? Living End. Living End's pretty good against these decks that are trying to win through creature combat. Vanderweil, thank you for the four month three sub. I appreciate the third of a year. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me here. Uh, this hand goes Citadel, Ornithopter, Drum, Vault Scourge, turn two Overseer. So, like, there's only one land, but we have two mana sources, so it seems fine. I feel like thinking about it more and seeing how these games play out against the linear decks, I feel like if Frenzy is a card I want, it's not a main deck card. Unless I was expecting to play against an absurd amount of fair decks. Which I don't think I would classify a generic modern field as having a, an absurd amount of fair decks. Tron, 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 do, 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 hopefully we'll kill them on turn three. I would like I'd like to apologize for the speed of my deck this game. I know I know we're only setting up for a turn four kill and that's incredibly slow. Thankfully our opponent is also playing the incredibly slow Tron deck that has seven mana on turn three, so I think we I think we have a shot. What are Ornithopters used for? They're free artifacts and free creatures that help enable things like Springleaf Drum and Mox Opal. And they also collect counters for things like Steel Overseer. And they also work with like Arcbound Ravager. O-Stone. O-Stone costs five mana to crack. So if they play O-Stone here, they can't play and crack it. Mana Monkey GG, yep. Yeah, All is Dust is the only sweeper that they play usually, and All is Dust doesn't impact my board full of colorless cards. Oh no, not Karn. How can I ever possibly win the game now? They've played Karn Liberated. Oh no. Three, four, five, six, seven, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. I believe I believe I have them exactly dead. 
So let's let's count it again, shall we? So this makes red mana off of this. And then I Galvanic Blast their face. And then this is 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. They are exactly dead. This magic game is really easy, chat. This deck makes my head hurt. This deck's actually easier to count with than um, the Hardened Scales deck. Like, like this deck is like Arcbound Ravager with Training Wheels. When you don't have to like count in doubles and you don't have to count Hangerback Walkers. It's like this is this is the simple Arcbound Ravager math. Let's be results based and say Trot is bad. Yes. Let's. This is like a mediocre affinity hand. It's, the, it's in the range of keepable in general. I don't know if it's in the range of keepable in this matchup. Is this, is this in the range of keepable in this matchup? I don't think that it is. I don't think that it is. This hand's worse. I guess, I guess I'm keeping. I'm going to ship the mountain and the dispatch here, I think. Hey, what's going on, Slow? Welcome back. I think I want to hold up Spell Pierce this turn. So Spell Pierce and Ancient Stirrings or Sylvan Scrying. Try and keep them off of Tron. Maybe that's playing too slow, because like now, now I can't, uh, now I can't play two drop this turn. I was so confused by our mulligan dumpers that I realized we're on moto right now and have silly mulligan rules. You mean awesome mulligan rules? Do I play any commander? I do not. When I, when I look to play uh, casual games, usually I just play, usually I, my group sticks to board games. All right, so my opponent hasn't been playing lands and they have four cards in their hands. So they have four biggity bombs. So like, I assume we're going to see a Nature's Claim here. Tower Corn. <laughs> Tron, 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 Tron. Yeah, slow. That's been a real issue lately. I would, uh, that's a, a, a good general note for everyone. If you don't have two-factor authentication enabled on your Twitch account, you should do that. 
You should probably also have a unique password for all of your different internet accounts. Another way to do it. I think people, people have been taking uh, password dumps from places and then trying to break into Twitch accounts with them. Yeah, we're, we're pretty dead here. I'm going to go ahead and uh, move on to the next one. Submit. Put, put two-factor on everything. It's really, I'm like, it's not impossible to like spoof a SIM card if you're just using text two-factor, two but like text two-factor is better than no two-factor. Makes it, makes it more difficult. Um, yeah, this is fine, right? Not amazing, but fine. Yep, yeah, I had one of those two enter. I don't, and I don't know if it's just password dumps at that point, because my Twitch password was unique. So I don't know if they're having some kind of brute force issue, or... Oh, I should have played Vault Scourge on one, right? I'm going to miss the point of damage now. My opinion on the London Mulligan is that it's awesome. Obviously, I could have paid life for this and then attacked with Blink Moth, but then I wouldn't be able to hold up Spell Pierce this turn. I think, I think anything that helps create less non-games of ma magic is a good thing. Magic's a game that has an incredible amount of variance in it, and try helping reduce that variance is, is a, a worthwhile thing. I think, I think if, I think Autumn hit the nail on the head when they said any decks that are a problem under the London Mulligan rule should probably just be addressed rather than changing, changing the Mulligan rule. All right, dead on four. Do you have a ghost quarter or a, do you have a ghost quarter or a Karn? Never not Karn. I guess walkie, walking ball gets us too. Mmm, they could have, uh, they could have, what's it called here? Um, they have nature's claim. So, the nice thing about this board state is that because I have the signal pest here, I actually don't have to I actually can fire up the both of these actually i guess i don't even need to fire this up huh i don't have to equip this with cranial plating basically is what i'm getting at so i go ahead and i do this and then i animate this and then i'm going to go ahead and equip this here and then we'll go ahead and attack. So we're presenting lethal with the ink moth, but we're also hitting them for a good chunk with the vault scourge. So I, I expect the ink moth is getting nature's claimed here so they don't die. And then the question will be, do they have a, a oblivion stone plus a land next turn to like be able to clean up the rest of my board so if they have land oblivion stone we are going to be going to be pretty dead here just do not have enough left over after that we just have two lands tower tower ulamog also not stellar
Worm Coil. And they have Ghost Quarter. That actually keeps them alive, huh? That's unfortunate. I am I'm one one point of damage short, right? Because they're they're gonna ghost quarter this, which then reduces this power by one. So like these these two are attacking for 12 right now, but once they ghost quarter this, I lose an artifact, which reduces the power this has on cranial plating. So land land oblivion stone does still get us here. Draken Stern, thank you for the half year. Really doesn't seem like half a year since I started watching you. Looking forward to excessive new standard. Me too. Looking forward to jamming lots and lots of standard. All right, is there, is there Oblivion in my future? There is not. All right. Four, four for four on linear races. Oh, I missed you, Flab. In honor of nine months, I think I'm going to start posting a daily pun in chat. Today is, do you think people on the Oregon Trail ask their friends to pass the ox cord? I don't know if I get that one. Thank you for the very generous tier three at any rate, Flab. Sorry, sorry I'm all over the place. Do, 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 do. Thanks for the amazing content you've been making for the last three years we've been watching. Thank you for the 15 months of support, Slow. And thank you for the very generous Tier 3. Remember, Tier 3 subs are open to submit uh, build arounds for the new set. So if that's something you are you are into for standard build arounds, those are available now. I think I keep this hand. So, like, I don't have a super explosive start, but, like, my turn two... My turn one is, like, land Springleaf Drum, and my turn two is, like, two drop Galvanic Blast something. JK, LOL. Hey, maybe they're maybe they're a fair discard deck and we're gonna get to gonna get to kick the tires on these frenzies finally. I would I would love to be able to kick the tires on these frenzies. Bloodstained Mire. Could be Jund. Could be Mardu Pyromancer. I'm going to cast Lily on the last hope next turn, and I'm going to concede. Ooh, they are playing Grixis. How... How many Culligan's commands are in their deck? That's that's the real question. The real question is how how badly do they want this? Never forget, chat. Modern modern is a format where oftentimes matches are decided by who wanted it more. I don't I don't know that we really have a lot of cards that indicate we want it against Grixis. Command me, Daddy. That's true. That's true. Frenzy, Frenzy is very good against Grixis. Uh, they can technically remove it via Cryptic Command, but it is a little bit slow. I thought the point of modern was to shake your fist at people that have the audacity to play interaction. Yep. Basically. This is my mountain. And like, you know, 
If we don't get swept next turn, they're basically at six with these Galvanic Blasts. Oh no, please, not Liliana the Veil. How can I ever possibly win the game now? Please, opponent. Oh no, please. Mercy, mercy. <laughs> oh, oh, opponent. Oh, my sweet summer child. Oh, oh, my sweet summer child. Edge Champion, Experimental Frenzy. They were hoping you would fall for the distraction attraction, right? All right, what am I... What am I supposed to trim here? Is this a Galvanic Blast ma out matchup? I feel like this might be a Galvanic Blast out matchup, huh? Like, it's just, it's just Reach, basically. Yeah, Experimental Frenzy is kind of sitting in the, the main deck champion slot of, like, a main deck hedge against fair decks. And I don't hate that. I think Experimental Frenzy definitely dumpsters fair decks more than more than champion does. It kills Lillian Fish. It does not kill Fish. Galvanic Blast only deals four. Fish is a 5-5. Five five. If it killed Fish, I'd snap keep it. You want me to trim an Overseer? I guess Overseer dies a lot. I don't know. Yeah, it's probably... Nah, I'm going to trim like a Memnite or a Volt Scourge, I think. I'm going to trim a Volt Scourge. I'm going to keep all my payoffs. Oh, you know what? I should probably trim Signal Pest, actually. Because Signal's Pest is a card that's like only good when you have a Critical Mass in play. Yeah, it's, pro it's probably a Pest out and not a Volt Scourge. Yeah, let's do, let's do that. Yeah, you're, you're thinking of uh, Shrapnel Blast, Herticus. That's the one that sacrificed an artifact to deal five. <laughs> boop, 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 Well, my poker hand is excellent. Pa 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 poker face, pa pa poker face. Ma 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 ma, ma 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 ma. Do 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 do. Ma 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 ma. This hand seems fine. I'm gonna go ahead and bottom a mox opal and keep and hope we draw a land or two. Got got two payoffs in my hand. Just need to need to rip some mana mana producers off the top. The top of my deck has been hot fire so far today, so hopefully it continues to burn a beautiful blaze. Perfect. Perfection. Our best possible draw there would have been Darksteel Citadel, but obviously beggars can't be choosers. We're happy to just draw a second land in general. Yeah, if we can get Frenzy down, the fact that they were like on the double swap plan last game could could imply that like they're not in Cryptic Commander. They're gonna have a hard time, hard time with that. We're, a, we're definitely a card quantity, not card quality deck. So, hoping to just like get Frenzy down and go to take him to Pound Town. Won't you take me to Funky Town? Flying V, thank you for that very generous Twitch Prime support. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hope you're having a fantastic middle of your week. Rejected! 
Fine. Fine. I'm really, really happy to see Steel Overseer eat a Cerebonus Reduction. Would much rather that eat it than Cranial Plating. Just eat it, eat it. Do, 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 do. I'm not spell piercing this because I can't make blue mana because Mox Opal is not currently active. <laughs> One Dark Steel Citadel, please. Rats. Rats. How much caffeine have I had today? Uh, only the small amount that's in, in my unsweetened tea. I stand up, I bounce around, you know. This is this is my job. I'm good at my job. I'm just burning the spell pierce ASAP here because this way if I draw a land next turn, we can just windmill this experimental frenzy into play and just take him to town. Oh no! Oh no! Culligan is coming for us! Oh whew! That's fine, that's fine. Bolt me, baby. Bolt me. Dude Light with the tip. Thank you for the support, bud. Here's for the white black vampire mini deck I submitted yesterday. It sounds good. I really appreciated your description, by the way. I really gen genuinely appreciate descriptions like that. All right, one time. Dark Steel Citadel. Let's go. Let's go. I oh. Doot, doot. Beer, beer. One, two, three. All right. One, two, three, four. I declare a frenzy war. Five, six, seven, eight. Try to keep your frenzy straight. Get him. Get him. All right. All right. Don't play a thought seize. Don't play a K command. Oh, no. They did what I asked. Wait, they made me sacrifice a creature? All right. All right. Dark Steel Citadel and zero mana creatures. Dark Steel Citadels and zero mana creatures. Oh, that is not, that is not what I wanted for Christmas, chat. That was not, not what I wanted for Christmas. Rats, we're so incredibly unlucky. Now they have cryptic mana up. It's not, it's not a good scene. It's not looking, it's not looking good for our hero. That technically doesn't do it, right? Does it? So if I animate this, it gives me one, two, three still. No, that doesn't do it. Rejected. All right, so any any land will do next turn. Oh, geez, that puts uh, that puts cards five six in their bin for this uh, search res canta. So they possibly get to flippity dip this on over. Really, really need the frenzy to come down this turn, or we're gonna have a hard time. Uh, yeah, one, one and zero mana creatures also do it. They kept the card on top here, so I assume whatever card they kept deals with Frenzy. Another Liliana. Last hope. That doesn't deal with experimental Frenzy. All right, zero mana creatures, one mana creatures, lands, zero mana artifacts, Oh no! Oh no! I guess I can use these as Lotus Petal, huh? I can use these as Lotus Petal. So I can an animate this. And then I go red, cast this, keep the new one. All right, we get, we got the thing into play. We did it, we put the thing on the table. I can't, I can't do anything with it, but it's in, it's in play. It's in, it's in play. Yeah, Lotus Petal. It was Lotus Petal, right? All right. Let's see how experimental this frenzy ends up being. 
I need you. I'm gonna need your back to be strong, Frenzy. For you need to pick pick this game up and carry it upon it. Remember all those times you summit land to the top and missed? Here they come. Um, you're killing my Arcbound Ravager. Yeah, I think I'm okay with that, right? We just load up Etch Champion here. Like, real question is, do I want to sacrifice a land to put extra counters on my Etch Champion? I think I do. I think I do. I think I do. Eh, I probably want to keep my lands to cast all my spells. So there are Ascantis flipping over. Good morning, Jarvis. Classic Affinity still seems pretty good. We haven't hit good matchups for the Frenzy. This is the fifth match of this league, and it's the first good Frenzy matchup, for sure. If I'd have used my mana differently last turn, I could have had a 3-3 edge champion up to block the Snapcaster Mage. Lily's at six. I haven't played a land yet this turn. I'm probably supposed to cast the second Frenzy. Because I haven't played a land yet this turn. Are we doing it? I'm not 100% sure what it is, but that kind of felt like doing it. We are we are a little bit low here. I'm at 8. They have this as Kanta active. This plating is unfortunately going to get drawn next turn, so we're not going to have access to that. I guess, I guess Vault Scourge technically represents points of damage in the long run. Or points of health, I should say. Yikes. I have a rules question for you. My friend and I were playtesting new cards and had the new Borgod on board. I'm sure you're aware of the new... So he tried to take it with Hostage Taker, which exiles it. So I told him since he got exiled, I put it third from the top. Yeah, yeah. The exile, the Hostage Taker exile is just like any other exile. This really sucks. I think I'm just supposed to cast it again, though. I 
In your opinion, is experimental frenzy a card that's well designed? Ah, that's kind of a loaded question. I suppose... I suppose I'd rather tap like this, that way I can hit the Liliana this turn. So they don't, so they don't alter. They have a Logic Knot. If they Logic Knot, they can't activate Azkanta, so that seems like a win for me. We, we do basically have True Name. Yeah. This is four, five. This is our six land. So there's actually a lot of lands left in our deck at this point. I'm only through. This is our six lands. So there's going to be 11 lands left in 33 cards. Like a third of our deck is lands at this point. So not, not super surprising to see another one there. Um... If I attack with this, I'm actually dead to Snapcaster Mage here, but I think I need to give Liliana a love tap here. Love tap, baby. Love tap, baby. Love tap. We are dead. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Yeah, that, that felt incredibly awkward. I'm not, I'm not sure I, like, I get that it, like, did stuff, but, like, did it really do the stuff we wanted it to do? I'm going to click submit. I actually need to run to the restroom really quick. When I get back, we're going to play this third game, and then we're going to move on to standard. I'll be right back. Remember that time I, I ran to the bathroom and my opponent was taking so long it didn't matter? Hey, Paula. Thanks for the 13 months. The very generous tier 3 resub. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. And yeah, Jarvis, to answer your question, this is, uh... This is the, uh... uh Ellen Boggin List, or however the, uh... However his last name is pronounced. This hand just doesn't do anything, right? This hand's reasonable, right? Plays, uh... Plays Ravager on one. Do I even want to play Ravager on one? I guess I get to play Ravager on one with Welding Jar to protect it, so that's fine. 
probably ship the second box opal here. Oh, this doesn't play Ravager on one. I'm dumb. This is only one, two. Still, it's still a keep, and I still ship Mox Opal, but we're not playing Ravager on one. My brain jumps to Mox Opal being Lotus Petal, which it's really not. You can't have two of them in play to enable each other. Have you played Karn, Jarvis? I've played Karn in this deck before and really like that. Corporate Karn. This is my first time trying Frenzy, but Corporate Karn felt very reasonable. I don't know. I like that. I like that Karn was like a master of Ethereum card advantage split card. Huh. I wonder if they have some kind of sweeper coming up. Like an okayish clock. They've got seven cards though. Sure. It's not particularly good. Okay, just sacrifice Ravager and put this counter on my other Ravager. Probably worth killing their Liliana here. Otherwise, she's going to edict me against like only one point of damage. They're down to 14 here. We've got like the Motley Artifact crew beatdown going on. Next turn, assuming they have no interaction, next turn we hit for five, six, seven. Potentially more, so them dead in two at the moment. Although they at least have Field of Rune in play, so like they obviously have some interaction. It's really awkward. It's really awkward that we drew our mountain because it means if they Field of Rune us here, it's actually Stone Rain. The Omni Z checking in for two years in a row. Oh, almost in a row. At any rate, thank you for the 24 months. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around here. Now, if I want to kill the Liliana, it costs me two points of damage, which I think is not worthwhile. I think I just smacked them for five here. 
Part part of me wants to throw the Mox Opal on my Ravager, but the flip side of that is if I draw Experimental Frenzy, I then can't cast it. There's three of those in my deck, so like there's some appeal to to waiting. So like they're basically at 13 here. This attack puts them to eight. If I sacrifice the Opal, the attack puts them to seven. And then they're dead next turn, most likely. Whereas if they go to eight, I guess I can technically still attack for lethal next turn if I put them to eight. What do we think? Do we bin the opal? I think I'm supposed to bin the opal. I should I should have animated the blink moth using the opal if I was going to sacrifice it here. Is the is the thought so that was technically a small small miss sequence on my part. I have one less mana available than I otherwise should. They have like a one or two mana piece of removal spell here. The Field of Rune ends up real bad for me. I'm doing okay, Iron. Main draw step Culligan's commanded here. So I think I just animate this again and then sacrifice it. Because then they don't get the land. And I think I think I'm gonna make them have it spot. Or we're just like dead to terminate fatal push here. All right, they didn't have it. That was that was out, right? That was they don't have it and they die. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Play play to win, right? Like we could we could play scared, but like if I give them another turn, am I winning the game with like the Liliana Edict sitting in play? I don't think I am. Just like cross your fingers and hope for the best. Let's get linear, linear. We want to be linear. Bum, 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 dun, 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 dun. I, I really feel like these sets of games convince me that traditional affinity is still reasonable to the surprise of no one. It's just like good, powerful linear draws. Experimental Frenzy really did not seem that good. We only played one match in five where it was kind of reasonable. And I think the number of matches where it's reasonable are dwarfed by the number of linear matches where it's not reasonable. We played Corporate Karn, 4-mana Karn Liberated in this deck last time, and I really kind of preferred that. Karn Liberated is a card that can generate card advantage against the fair decks when generating card advantage is something you want to do. Obviously, it's not as crazy as Frenzy at doing that, but the key to Karn Liberated being reasonable, I think, really lies in the fact that it's a card that can be aggressive. Karn, Corporate Karn, yeah, Karn Side of her. I said Karn Liberated a couple times. Kar Karn Side of her, the 4-mana four 4-mana four Karn. The thing that really likes, I like about four mana Karn in this deck, Karn Sign of Urza, is that it can be aggressive 
when this deck wants to be aggressive as opposed to as opposed to only generating card advantage. So I think while Karn Cyan of Urza is worse card advantage than Experimental Frenzy, the fact that it allows you to take an aggressive slant with the card, especially if you're main decking it, I think would would give it my preferred opposed to Experimental Frenzy in the shell. And obviously, I only played five matches with the deck. My sample size is small, so take things with a grain of salt and all that. But I think from, from a theory perspective and what Frenzy felt like in practice, I think Karn Cyan of Urza is the, the four mana card advantage card I would prefer. Uh, we went four and one with this. Good, good modern deck. Good record. Weird, I know. 